I am a regulatory affairs mm -hmm. specialist. I work in regulatory affairs for medical device companies. I started out in biomedical engineering, as you said. My job as a regulatory affairs specialist is to put together the package submission that will be going to FDA so that FDA can review. And I would say keep your mind open to different possibilities and different avenues that you can take with your engineering uh, background. I am a regulatory affairs mm -hmm. specialist. I work in regulatory affairs for medical device companies. I started out in biomedical engineering, as you said. I studied uh, biomedical engineering in, mm -hmm. as an undergrad, as well as, uh, as a grad student uh, at the University of Vermont. And after grad school, I was recruited by the Food and Drug Administration. The FDA regulates all drugs and medical device, and devices sold in the United States. Once I joined the FDA, I learned all the regulatory codes, all the requirements that a medical device manufacturer or a drug maker has to comply with in order to sell or market their devices in the United States. Actually, never, I never knew much about medical device regulations and how it worked and even how uh, devices or drugs got into the market. It was never a thought, never crossed my mind. All I remember was that in high school I, I knew that I loved the math, math and sciences. I also loved technology and I had a passion for biology and the medical sciences. But not being able to choose between one or the other, you know, whether to go into medicine, maybe be a doctor. Um, I stumbled upon biomedical engineering, okay. which was a basically it's a, it's a combination of engineering principles applied to medicine. Okay. So uh, I thought that was a great way to sort of merge and bring those two passions together. Okay. But the funny thing is, this was 2000 when I finished grad school. Grad school. And at the time, no one really knew what to do with biomedical engineering. Okay. Uh, biomedical engineering was still a up-and-coming field yeah. and a new field. And, uh, when I graduated, I said I was a biomedical engineer, and, <laughs> okay. and it was it was quite difficult to find a job because a lot of uh, companies at the time wanted someone with a you know traditional, traditional mechanical engineering background or electrical background or uh, software engineering background because okay. if you if you think about it, a lot of these devices have mechanical, electrical, software components. Even pharmaceutical companies are looking for traditional engineers, like mechanical and electrical engineers? Yeah, because a lot of these drugs need, mm -hmm. uh, require a device component to deliver the drug. Oh. You have to have an understanding of all the federal regulations, okay. regulations that are developed by the government, the FDA, to help protect public safety. And these regulations basically outline rules and requirements to for medical device manufacturers to demonstrate safety and efficacy. Okay. So do you have to do the testing or you like you check? That's a good question. I get that question a lot. Um, no, the FDA is not responsible for doing the testing, so the burden of proof is on mm -hmm medical device manufacturers. Oh, okay. So the manufacturers have to do the testing on their own and bring the results and the data of that data and the results of that of the, of the testing to FDA and FDA reviews okay. the, the data to ensure that the data is adequate and testing is, is adequately performed and it demonstrates that the, the safety. Okay. So um, our job as a reviewer at the FDA for example is when I was at the FDA it was to review the data to to ensure that they've met requirements, that they've done the appropriate testing, and the testing shows safety and it, that it performs as it's intended based on those tests. Now on the other side, now that I'm I'm no, I'm no longer with the FDA, okay. I've now joined medical device manufacturer, 
years. I help them, guide them in determining what tests are needed. And but the main part of my my job as a regulatory affairs specialist is to put together the package submission that to will be given to FDA so that FDA can review. So that will include everything from the device description to the testing that we perform, whether it be clinical testing or animal testing or bench performance. So bench testing basically consists, it consists of different types of mechanical and physical types of testing. You know, our, our job is to put that information together that concisely describes the device and shows that the device is safe and effective in a concise manner. So having a, to tie it with my engineering background, having a background and knowledge of devices or technology or biomedical sciences helps you understand the device and how it functions and how it's, how it's used on patients. And having that understanding, having that background helps you to put together and prepare uh, submissions for FDA to review. My first suggestion would be to go and read up about regulatory affairs. Okay. It is not your traditional path in when it comes to engineering. Okay. It's something I sort of fell into. I sort of discovered while looking for jobs in biomedical engineering, but there's so many different pathways you can take. If you know that you have a passion and desire for learning about sciences, uh, technology, and you, and you want to go into biomedical engineering, for example, then that's one thing. After you do decide that biomedical engineering is the area that you want to focus on, it's best to sort of talk to other people in that field. Talk to other people in the field, do your own research about the different kinds of you know, pathways you can take as a biomedical engineer. You know, it doesn't necessarily have to be in regulatory affairs, it can be in research and design, mm -hmm. it could be in testing, mm -hmm. take your education further and get a PhD and, and become a professor and teach. You know, so there are different areas you can go into, you can go into clinical studies, okay. you know, where you um, help implement the use of advice and test it on patients. And um, so there are d different avenues and it helps to talk to people in the field. It also helps to look at job postings that, you know, if you do a keyword search on biomedical engineer and see what kind of jobs pop up. A lot of jobs sometimes are interested in your technical aptitude. You know, they are looking for people who have a background in engineering, but not necessarily be a biomedical or an engineering job. Like regulatory affairs, you don't necessarily deal with, it's not a hands-on type of job where you're working on devices. It's more on the regulatory side. And I would say keep your mind open to different possibilities and different avenues that you can take with your engineering uh, background. You know, so if you're studying in engineering, it doesn't, you, you don't necessarily have to follow your traditional path yeah. uh, with uh, an engineering degree. Um, there's so many other different career paths that you can take that right. utilizes your background in engineering. Yeah. Um, not to say that the traditional engineer is, is no longer needed. There are definitely a lot of jobs out there that um, require an engineering background. Yeah. And um, engineering is still very good. It is still very good. It's, it's just that uh, today it's rapidly, it's rapidly changing. Yeah. And, and uh, I would suggest not to keep your mind, to keep your mind open and, uh, mm -hmm. and look at different possibilities. Yeah, cool. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Bye.